bring in Supervisor Janice Hahn of LA County. We appreciate you uh, spending time with us once again. And, and I'm, I'm just to begin with, what is your message to those, to the, all those businesses, people that work there, people that own them, that are affected by all of this? Well, the first thing I want to say to everyone is it is bad. We have now reached the second wave, the surge. It's happening across the country. We're still in the midst of a global pandemic, um, and we have among us a very contagious, deadly virus. But what I would say to these uh, business owners, these restaurants, it doesn't feel fair, I know. Um, you have borne the brunt of this pandemic. Um, your livelihood and your employees' livelihood depend on people coming to your restaurant. But the fact of the matter is, we're trying to prevent what the next stage is, which would be actually asking you to go back to only curbside and delivery. That is supposed to happen if our cases reach 4,000 over five days. We're already at 3,900. I'm hoping we can reverse this so that we don't have to tell you, guess what, it's now only curbside and delivery um, pickup. Listen, it's tough. We got to hang in there till the vaccine is available. But you know what we need? We could use some help from, from uh, Washington, D.C. with some more federal help for businesses and employees. We need to pay people uh, so that they can you know, stay home. That's what needs to happen uh, from Washington, D.C. Of course, you're a former member of Congress. That doesn't look like that's happening. There are no negotiations currently going on between the president and Democrats in Congress, and there's fear that that may have to wait until a Biden administration for there to be action. Dr. Drew. Seems like it. I just want to ask you, Supervisor Hahn, exactly what I was bringing up a little while ago, which was we're essentially where we actually were better than we were in July. We're by a considerable margin, particularly with hospitalizations and deaths. Why the dire warnings now? Why didn't we have those dire warnings for the exact same kind of an outbreak, the surge we had here locally, that we took care of no problem? Why aren't we just doing what we did then as opposed to having a sword of Damocles over our head this time, as though this time it's different? Well, you know, I'm with, I hear you, and I'm listening to our public health officer who said, um, we're in tough times right now. And the fact that these cases have jumped so quickly, yesterday we were at uh, 2,300, today we're at 39. So they really are jumping. And, you know, I realize deaths are slowing down, and I think that's a lot because our doctors and our medical professionals know more about this virus. We have some better treatments. We know there's some there are drug, drugs that are being used that can help people lessen the impacts. But I don't want more people to get infected with this. We don't know the long-term impact that this virus has on people. It's too new. And people who just think, uh, you know, let's just kind of let it go. I'm not one of those. I don't want any more people to get infected, which is why we in the county have implemented these new restrictions. I want to turn this around. I don't want more people to get sick. I don't want, want more elderly people to get sick and, possi and possibly die. So let's just sort of buckle down. I think we're all COVID fatigued. I know mm -hmm. I am. Um, and I think we've gotten a little lax in in our activities. I think people are dining out with people who aren't part of their family. Um, and that's part of the reason we're, we're doing the curfew at 10 p.m. We know that the riskiest activity is eating and drinking. Why? Because you're not wearing your mask. And so the longer you stay at a restaurant, the longer you're, you're drinking, you're probably losing some of your inhibitions. And that's where um, we think this virus could be spreading. I know it's tough, but right. I think we all just need to buckle down again and get it right. Well, let's talk more about that curfew. So it goes from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. You guys have said it really focuses on businesses. So if, if I'm out walking my dog at 10, 15, is somebody going to come stop me? I mean, who does this apply to? How is this going to work? And what does enforcement look like? Depends on what kind of dog you have. No, um, <laughs> it's not for the public. Uh, this is just for businesses. And again, it is merely to limit the activities that people can choose to participate in. We think at 10 p.m. at night, um, if you have uh, restaurants aren't open, bars aren't open, breweries aren't open, wineries aren't open, people will go home. And that's ultimately what we want. But this is not a curfew for the general public. This is just to limit those risky activities um, that people would avail themselves of if it were open for business.
And it's a lot more enforceable you know, to do what you're talking about, enforcing a public, you know, a, a, would require the sheriff's department. True, and, and you know what, to be yeah. honest with you, I know some of these businesses are upset about it, but we've also heard from some other businesses that said, you know what, this is doable. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., we can do that. That's a bit of a sacrifice, but not as much as it would be if we had to shut down completely. Let's also talk about something else L.A. County is launching. It's the first of its kind campaign to help patients anonymously notify close contacts about exposure. How is this going to work? Tell, tell us more about this. Well, you know, contact tracing has been a challenge um, since the start of this. And that's part of why it's difficult to stop the spread of this virus. Um, Currently, for a person gets called on the phone if they've been if they've tested positive and asked to you know answer some questions. Well, it's only like sixty percent of the people actually respond to that phone call from the from the health department. This way, if you've tested positive, um, you'll get an email or a text on your phone, and you will be asked to anonymously. Um, indicate who you've been in contact with with their contact number so you'll know right away gosh i was at this restaurant with these six friends here's their contact number you should notify them and let them know um, that they've been in contact with someone who tested positive we think it'll help um we've got a if you test positive we need you to quarantine but we also need to know who you've come in contact with so we can work to slow the spread dr drew Not sure if he can hear us. Uh, well, Supervisor, thank, thank you so much for your time. I know there's a lot of uh, confusion and a lot of people that are upset. What, final question, what do you say to, to critics who might say these numbers seem arbitrary? All of a sudden, 4,000 or 4,500, and that the, it seems like the metrics keep changing, the, the tiers keep changing, and people are working hard to try to abide by the rules, but then it seems like the goalposts keep shifting. What do you say I, to I, critics I, on that? I, I lost it. Well, I think that's why it's important that we lay it out. Um, when we got to 3,500 cases, these restrictions went into place. When we hit 4,000 cases, this is what's going to happen. And when we hit 4,500 cases a day for an average over five days, we're going to have a safer at home order again. We're giving people plenty of time to look at this. They're going to be able to pay attention when they hear these numbers and know what's going to happen um, in their society. And I think that's important, and I get it. Um, it has been confusing. It's hard to keep up with these numbers. But I think everyone needs to know it's we're not in a good place right now, unfortunately. Our numbers are going in the wrong direction. And whatever we can do personally, individually, to do our best to turn these numbers around until this vaccine is available, I think will be for the betterment of all the residents of Los Angeles County. All right, we'll end there. Uh, Supervisor Hahn, thank you for your transparency. You. This is such an important conversation. And we appreciate you continuously coming on and updating us and answering the tough questions. Thanks for being here. Thank, thank you. you. We're in this together.